Thank you very much. Um, so this poem, uh, I wrote it every year. I go to the Scottish islands of Iona, along with a group of other writers, and I spend a week there um, focusing on poetry. And the highlight, one of the highlights of the week is to walk in silence to the far ends of the islands where, thanks to a seam, a geological seam, a few hundred meters from shore, these little beads of clear uh, green serpentine are washed up onto the bay. And this poem was written for a dear friend of mine, Elizabeth, uh, who on this one occasion couldn't make it to Iona. Post op for Elizabeth. I spotted you this morning near Columbus Bay before the climb toward the slate grey loch just past that split in Macher where beach pushes through past the lambs going mental as they race us to the fence posts player numbers painted on their backs past fat pellets of goose droppings and strewn button top shells those smooth white spirals no bigger than tears with their gently wound mysteries. In a hollow to the right, a sheep, shaggy and wise, with high finished cheekbones and an aquiline nose just like yours. Standing, staring straight at me with two lambs suckling, one on either side like wings, tails frantic as propellers. A light aircraft flown in from the recovery ward to watch our pilgrimage, blessing each of us in turn as we made our way to the pebbled bay at the south of the island, the Atlantic winking like a waggish ant, the mad scrabble for green serpentines of which you are the queen. I didn't find a big one, not like yours, but a handful of smaller speckled stones like eggs that I tucked inside my clothing and carried back across the peaty scars and the new wood bridge to the sill of my hotel window with its perfect view across the sound. This next poem, excuse me, was also written in Scotland. <clears throat> I'm from Glasgow, but now live in the south of France, have lived down there for 16 years now. And I think for that reason, I tend to write a lot of, sco a lot of poems about Scotland because that perspective seems to kind of give an emotional uh, sharpness to my visits when I come back north. Um, this is from my second collection, The Art of Egg, The Singing Bowl. When it's gonged, sound clambers from it, all knees and wide eyes, as if in a hurry to get where it's going. Then comes a looser rhythm, a metal hoop spinning from the rim, the quiet engine driving the heart. Finally, a patient voice emerges and meanders round the room, barely audible, more touch than sound, a brass-robed pilgrim that reminds me of Stravagen, that restaurant in the West End where we lost ourselves in friendship and in conversation and learned the word meant to wander aimlessly with intent. I'll read two more poems. Um, uh, this one really just to bring the tone down a little bit. Called Urination for Girls. Mornings are a rush. The bladder's quick release, last night's wine or water, 
a golden gush accelerating hard, speeding down the main road before purring to a halt. Outdoors is best. Crouched in long grass, that deluge into soil can make a woman giddy with its ripeness, the blunt and hot necessity, the nutty vapour rising like an aura above the steam. Misjudged, an ardent piss can soak a shoe, saturate the pants, leave her with a nettle rash or a gusset full of burrs. But better a woman's surge than a man's dejected arc. One hand on his limp and slug-like cock. A single braid of pea showering the grasses. Or a toy gun firing the kismo at the wall, slurring slogans onto brickwork, tarmac. Competing with his pal behind the rose and crown who can hit the furthest point. The sputter halt and sputter till it's through. A woman directs herself straight down into soil, genitals just inches from the surface, the stem of her so strong it could lift her like a gorgeous lily above a flower bed of dew. Uh, recently I've been writing quite a lot of poems um, about Scottish heritage and Scottish history and this is the, the first of these. I have no idea where they're going or what they're going to do but they seem to be sort of coming along and charging into my thinking when I sit down to write. And um, the only thing you need to know, get benefit from knowing about <coughs> in this poem is that the Hebridean sheep that we get up in the highlands and in the islands of Scotland are black. Hebridean. Out of the ash steps a bruise and another, now a mob, helter-skelter into the eye of macher and sand, of marum and sod, until they come to the sea where flames can be seen on far-off shores. They shake the ash from their coats and their hooves and up rise the scars and the bones of shepherds, of spinners, of weavers, of thatchers, of boat builders, peat cutters, gull trappers, egg gatherers, net menders, fishermen. Up rise the broken and the banished in a single plume. And what is left is blacker than sleep. Out of the ash step the sheep. Thank you. goes to Sharon Black for a poem called Post Pop. It's a quiet, tender poem that impressed me more with each rereading of it. The title and dedication suggest what T.S. Eliot called private words addressed to you in public. In this case, a poem is charm or prayer for recovery or healing. It's deceptively simple, an account of a walk through a landscape, but the details are telling and wonderfully intricately drawn. Shannon Black. <laughs> 